So today, um, we are looking at uh, uh, our topic, Solar uh, Christus. Solar Christus. Could we try that? That is Latin. Uh, Solar Christus. Let's go. Solar Christus. And our text is uh, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 16 and verse number uh, 17. This is what the Word of God says. Acts, uh, Colossians, sorry, uh, chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones, all powers, all rulers, all authorities, all things have been created through him and for him, he is before all things, and, is in, and in him all things hold together. That him, indeed, is Christ, our Lord. If we have outline, we will seek uh, to define what solar crystals is and its origin um, and the solars, there are other solars, uh, some people will say solai, but there are some other solars. We will also try to explain why Christ alone is sufficient for our salvation as we have sung today when we began our praise and worship session. We will also point out some errors uh, that uh, um, may, may make us question the sufficiency of Christ. And then finally, we will discuss the implications of solar crystals. So let's try a definition um, of solar crystals and the origin of the solars. Um, following the conversion of the, the Roman Emperor Constantine, and this takes us to that section of church history that begins around the 16th century. And that's when the, the Roman Emperor Constantine was ruler, and he, 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 was, he lived between 306 and 337 AD, that's after Christ. An edict or decree was issued to protect the Christian faith. Uh, we are told he got converted, and when he got converted, he, uh, he wrote some law, if you like, to protect the Christian faith, and so uh, Christianity was protected and it almost became uh, the state religion. And you would not be able to distinguish the matters of state and the matters of religion because um, this emperor, Constantine of Rome, um, almost brought the two together. And then because of that, there was a lot of jostling for power. It wasn't clear who is superior to the other. Is it the Pope who is the head of the church, or is it the Emperor who, is the, who was the head of the state? Um, so, sometimes because of that mixture uh, of things, the Emperor could decide who the Pope will be. <coughs> it's like um, the university deciding who the chairman of the Christian Union will be. Or if you're talking about the government of Kenya and, and the church in Kenya, the president deciding who is going to be the bishop. And then on the other hand, because the bishop had also a lot of spiritual power, if he was unhappy with the emperor, he would have to excommunicate him. Uh, and uh, once he, he, he excommunicates him, then he ceases uh, to be emperor. So that type of war was quite a troublesome thing for the church in those days. Now, that is one of the reasons why there needed to be a reformation. But there was a little more. And the people during the reformation, or the people who led the reformation, had a number of problems with the church of both the, the Roman Catholic Church of both this, uh, if, you, if, you, if you would state it that way. One of those was the, the issue of how do you get a ticket to heaven? The Pope of those days, or the Catholic Church leadership of those days, believed that if you did, um, that, that they can actually sell you a ticket to go to heaven. That ticket was called an indulgence. So if you read church history, you will hear the sale of indulgences. It was a certificate, a piece of paper, that would be exchanged if you are a rich man and you supported the church in a certain way, maybe you paid some debt for the church, or you, you built um, a section of the, of, of the church and so on, 
the higher your indulgence will be, the more grace you will get, and your time, if you die and you were you, you a sinner, and you know, then you will go to purgatory. Purgatory would be a place where you would be waiting. Uh, you will be waiting. And if people intercede for you very hard, then your time might be shorter in purgatory. So if you have a high indulgency, uh, indulgence, you have, you, have, you have given the church something, the church gives you a letter or a certificate that shortens your time in purgatory, and so you will go to heaven faster than the fellow who died and, uh, and had no indulgences, had no money uh, to buy indulgences. So heaven would be able to be bought. You could pay through your way to heaven. And Martin Luther and other, um, other reformers say, no, there is something wrong here. This is not scriptural. For instance, Pope Leo X was able to use the indulgences that were raised. He used, he used to he raised money by selling indulgences for the rebuilding of St. Peter's uh, Basilica in Rome. Using the money uh, that he got by selling forgiveness to people to shorten their duration uh, in poverty. But there was a little more than that. The, Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church then believed uh, that uh, you could also go to heaven not through Christ or through forgiveness of sins, but just by being good. If you do good deeds, if you behave well, then uh, you could find your way uh, to heaven. But Martin Luther, uh, who was a professor then of some university uh, there, was struggling in his faith. He found that however good he tried to be, that he would eventually find himself falling into sin in his mind, in his heart, and he really struggled with that. And as he was reading the Bible, he came across Romans chapter 1, verse 17. The chapter, the verse there says, the just shall live by faith. And so he says, no, going to heaven and being right with God cannot come through just doing good or trying to be good, but it can come solely, solely by faith in Christ. So there he says, it's by faith alone, and we'll come to the other uh, solar uh, shortly, and what, that will be one of them. Going to heaven is not through good works. Going to heaven is by faith alone that is granted by God himself. But there was one more thing that was very critical. The Roman Catholic Church then believed that the Bible, and in fact uh, yeah, the Bible, is not enough. They failed the church tradition, the culture, the other books and the sayings of the saints or old would be and something additional that is not enough. Uh, you cannot go to heaven uh, by understanding um, the Bible alone. You need something more. And Martin Luther and others uh, during the 15th century, after the discovery of the uh, of the of the printing press um, uh, through the Gutenberg uh, Gutenberg uh, research and production of materials, 15th and 16th century allowed the Bible to be translated in many languages, uh, from Latin, German, Martin Luther was German, Calvin was uh, 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 from another, another, another country. The Bible was translated in so many languages, and God began to speak in the language of the people. And the uh, reformer says, you can only hear, in fact, he says, scripture alone. Scripture alone, not church tradition, not other sayings of the wise, but scripture alone. These things that I have described and others led to what is now called the Protestant Reformation with key figures like Martin Luther and others. And now you are talking about 1483 to, to 1546. And there were many others um, who came before Martin Luther nailed his 95 pieces on the door of the Church of Wittenberg in 1517. There were many other reformers. 
That whole uh, problem that arose in the Roman Catholic Church all those days and caused uh, many schisms and people wanted to reform the church led to that um, reformation and there were five saints. There were five saints in Latin and they are called solas. Now, if you want to uh, sound very English, you can say solae, because it's plural for sola. Now, one was a sola scriptura, meaning scripture alone. The second was sola fide, which meant by faith alone. The third was sola gratia, which meant by grace alone. The fourth was sola Christa, the one we are talking about today, which means through Christ, Christ alone. And the fifth one, the sorry deal, Gloria, glory to God alone. Do you guys to try those five solas? Let's try the first one. So it's sola scriptura. Let's go. Sola scriptura, which means by scripture alone. The second one is sola fide. Let's go. Sola fide, by faith alone. The third one is sola gratia. Which means uh, grace alone. Let's go. Sola gratia by grace alone. And today we are looking at sola Christa. Let's go. Sola Christa through Christ alone. And the third is soli Deo Gloria. Let's go. Soli Deo Gloria. Glory to God alone. Now we want to look briefly now. At uh, uh, Sola Christus. Sola Christus, which is uh, uh, by Christ alone or through Christ alone. Basically, it just means um, only Christ, solely Christ, no one else. Christ alone is my Savior. Christ alone is my Redeemer. Christ alone is my uh, High Priest. He is the one who gives me salvation and is the one who will take me uh, to heaven when my here on earth is ended. As already noted above, the Roman Catholic Church appeared to be giving more prominence to other things or other people more than Christ. Sola Christus, therefore, is a teaching that Christ is the only mediator between God and man and no other mediator. And you do not need any other mediator, neither do you have any other mediator between God and man. Secondly, that salvation is by Christ alone. So Sola and Christus stands at the center of the other Sola. It connects the other four Sola. It the fifth Sola. It connects them because every one of the Sola, Sola is by faith alone. The object of that faith is Christ. Whether it's by scripture, through scripture alone, the content of uh, uh, the main character of scripture is Christ all the way from Genesis to Revelation. So Sola Christa uh, is really the fulcrum of the solace, of all of the solace, is at the heart uh, of all the solace. This helps us to identify Christ exclusively identify him as the only sufficient savior of the world. Not Buddha, not Mahatma Gandhi, not, not uh, uh, Reverend Moon, not Mohammed, or any other, not the great prophet. No, it is Christ alone and he stands with no equal uh, in the world. Romans chapter 4 verse 25 tells us that Jesus Christ our God and our Lord died for our sins and he was raised again for our justification. That was Romans 4 25. Christ was raised, he died and was raised for your salvation and for your justification. The reason why it was important also to talk about the sufficiency of Christ is because the church of those days also uh, gave a lot of weight to priests, priests, uh, catechists, and they are the ones who would interpret the Bible for people, they would read it for them, and actually other people were not allowed to read the Bible. 
So people like John Wakeley, John Hughes, and others, well, they suffered greatly for trying to read and interpret the scriptures uh, for other people. So the work of priests and uh, pastors like me and uh, some of us here, as important as it is, Martin Luther and others say they cannot replace Christ who is the high priest. At the same time they say it is not only one person who can approach Christ. In fact, Martin Luther and others talked about the priesthood of all believers. That you and I have also been elected by God. We, we are a holy nation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a people who are dedicated to God that we may show forth the glory of God. The Bible further says, in terms of the sufficiency of Christ, in, uh, the, in the passage we read in Colossians, but let me read another one, which is Luke 24, verse 26 to 27. In this passage, Luke 24, 26 to 27, Jesus is walking uh, alongside two disciples um, who are on their way to the mouth, and after some time, uh, he was uh, he is talking um, and he is talking with them, and as he walked with them, he asked them, "Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory?" And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said all the scriptures concerning himself. What was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. So that's why I say that Christ is the subject and the content of all uh, the scripture. Now, Christ achieved for us full salvation, not part of it. It is full uh, salvation. And the Reformation was one of the reasons why the Reformation became important is because uh, church tradition was being upheld and also sacraments sacraments were becoming more important than Christ. And therefore, it is Christ alone and nobody and nothing else. So that's a little background about uh, uh, Soli, um, uh, about uh, so, uh, Solar Christus. Now we go to the second uh, note here. Christ alone. Why is Christ alone sufficient? Why is Christ alone? Why is He the one who is sufficient? Christ is unique in many ways, but I will point out three short ways in which Christ is unique and insufficient for your salvation. First is in His atoning work. And atonement is, is really um, forgiveness and, and, and the salvation. In those older days before the, before the New Testament, um, priests sacrificed, they, they slaughtered a lamb uh, or a pigeon or uh, something else, and blood was shed in order to atone for the sins of the people. But in Hebrews chapter 9, in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15, here we read, the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since the death has occurred, that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. So here, Christ becomes the mediator and the only mediator and a mediator who is enough to mediate between God and man. He becomes in his death, he atones for your sins and atones for my sins. And one more passage in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12 to 14. Hebrews 10, 12 to 14, that reads like this. When Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. For by a single offering, he has perfected all, for all time those who are being sanctified. What a wonderful passage that is. You could actually say, Christ is enough. Yes, so a torture. There is no need for any other sacrifice. 
and went on the cross, he said, it is finished. He indeed meant salvation. The work of the atonement is complete. And so you and I, who are beneficiaries of the New Testament, who are believers of Christ, once you put your faith in Christ, your atonement is, co is complete in Christ alone. Glory be to God. Amen. The second reason why Christ is unique and um, is, is, is sufficient for our salvation is because he is our high priest. Again, in the Old Testament, the high priest was a very important person. He went to the Holy of Holies once a year. And he, he again atoned and, and pleaded uh, for, to, for God to forgive uh, people's sins. And yet this priest would die. Now Christ has become our high priest in the order of Melchizedek, who had no beginning and had no end. And Jesus died once and he rose again, never to die again. That is your high priest. He stands completely and always before God the Father on your behalf and on my behalf. Hebrews chapter um, 2 verse 17 is another interesting verse. Hebrews 2 17 it says, Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and a faithful high priest in the service of God. Why? To make propitiation for the sins of people. The reason Christ is so important as a high priest is that he understands you and he understands me. Because he was right here on this earth, suffered like you, struggled like you. If there was Corona in those days, he would have experienced that same challenge like you are experiencing. When people are going for a censor, uh, his mother went for a censor, you know what? Like just like you and like me, tempted just like you and like me, but without sin. Therefore, when he stands before God on my behalf, he understands my weakness. He understands your weakness. He understands your challenge with your faith and how you struggle, how you try to pray and you're unable to pray. How you try to read the Bible and, and you're unable to read the Bible. How you, how you want to serve and you're unable to serve. He understands perfectly. And then therefore is able to plead with the Father on your behalf and on my behalf. He is perfect. He is a perfect high priest in the order of Melchizedek and understands you perfectly and understands me. The third reason why Christ is sufficient for your salvation and, my, and for my salvation is his sanctifying grace. Sanctification is renewal, is purging, is forgiveness, is it's like, it's like revival. His sanctifi sanctifying grace, grace to sanctify and to cleanse you and me can only come from Christ who is our only Savior. Glory be to God. So that was why Christ alone is sufficient and was my point number two. Now I want to go to point number three which is possible errors that can be caused by this whole misunderstanding and why it was important for solar crystals and for the other five uh, four solar to happen during the reformation. I would say the possible error that still happen even today is when we substitute the roles and attributes that are assigned to Jesus by God the Father we attribute them to other people or we substitute them for other people. Those other people could be religious leaders. They could be saints of old that some people use to ask them to plead with them uh, because they have gone ahead of us. That should not happen uh, for evangelical Christians because our intercessor is Christ. And we cannot substitute the role of salvation, of redemption, of forgiveness that is attributed to Christ. We can never substitute Christ with, with anything else. 
But many have uh, substituted this. Sometimes it's individuals. Some that, that they uphold so much that Christ has no role to play. It could be good people like prophets, like seers, whom you defend depend on so much. It could be a pastor, it could be a prophet, and you give yourself so much to him or her, and he or she crowd Jesus. So that you don't see Jesus, you see this individual. That substitution is wrong. It could be issues of power. It could be issues of money. People who feel that because I'm wealthy, because I'm a brilliant guy, I don't need Christ. Christ is needed for the poor. Christ is needed for those who have no food in the fridge. Therefore, they need to pray. Christ is needed for those who cannot afford to pay their way into medical attention and theatre. Christ is not needed uh, for, uh, for us who are self-sufficient. That is idol, self-idolizing, idol uh, worship. And that uh, is a mistake and should not happen. Other uh, people would use science and they would say, all you need is science. Remove religion from all these matters you're talking about, including matters of health. Let's do science, let's talk science, not religion. Uh, I would tell us about the environment. They would worship trees and they think that nature, that's where God, their God, lives. Others would substitute this for um, creation, other parts of creation. The water, the sea, the mountains. God has lifted Jesus, raised him from the dead, made him the judge, the king of kings, and the lord of all, and cannot be substituted for anything else. Whether it's money, whether it's people, whether it's saints who died, and uh, when ahead of us, we must never substitute Jesus for anything or for anybody else. So when the reformers insisted on a, a, on a solar a crystal, they affirmed that we are saved by Christ alone, apart from merit of any other person. So errors have to do with that substitution, that uh, replacement of the work of Jesus with anything else, however, however good that would be. And may God forgive us if we ever go that way. Let's look at a short passage here uh, in Titus chapter 3 verse 5. It would say, Titus chapter 3 verse 5, it would say, He saved us not because of righteous things that we have done, but because of His mercy. We are saved not because of good works, we are saved because of His mercy. Very important. From beginning, therefore, to end, the gospel uplifts uplift Christ as Him alone. He is the one who came from heaven and to seek and to save the lost. It is Christ who obeyed the law to the, to the end. It is Christ who died on the cross for you. It is Christ who, who was raised from the dead. It's Christ who is seated at the right hand of God. It's Christ who intercedes for you. It's Christ who came. And it's Christ who returned. And it is Him who will come back this time as King and Judge. And so we can always, all of us, we can say, a soul of Christus. Because He is our Lord and our God. There is no other. The gospel, my brothers and sisters, there. It is not a message about what we must do for God. That's not the gospel. The gospel is a good news to us of what God has done for us. What has he done? He has given us Christ as our Savior. That is the gospel. The gospel is about what he has done. It's not what you or me can add to so that I am better, I am better saved. No, it is what he has done. And in conclusion, what are the implications, therefore, of knowing that Christ alone is our Savior? What are the implications of that? 
It would mean, therefore, that you and I are, have this assurance of salvation that is so firmly held and given and, and guaranteed by Jesus. So that when you walk around, if you are a believer, walk high in humility, but walk high with your head high because you are on the right path. You know, there are many times we, we, we kind of apologize that we are already a Christian. We say, oh, now, you know, the others were going for the street, but me, I could go, you know, because we have to suffer for Christ. Um, and we have, we have all these apologies and demeanor that says, you know, uh, walk quietly as you enter into the house of the Lord. No, no, no. You are born again. Your place is heaven. And Christ is with you. He walks with you. He walks with you into those examples, into those projects. Even through sickness and disease, Christ walks with us. And we are more than conquerors in Him. Him alone, my friends. Him alone. And let us not be afraid or be worried or be so concerned about our future. A future like, so what will happen to me? Now there are no jobs. Now I am 30 years old to 40 years and no one has smiled at me. <laughs> All of these things that you are going to ask, what you don't know is that God has you in his hands. And that you are in the palm of his hand. Glory be to God. In fact, we can say, sorry, dear Gloria. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, you got it. Because we belong to Him. So we will not be worried. We will not be mourning and groaning and grieving. No. We will smile. We will walk in confidence. Because Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. May the Lord bless us all. So we have defined what solid Christians are in and the origin of the Psalms. They come from the Reformation. We have talked about why Christ alone uh, is sufficient. And we have three reasons why Christ alone is sufficient for our salvation. We have pointed out a few errors that are repeated even in our day. And we have concluded with implications of a solar Christus. Let's bow our heads for a short word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you indeed for giving us an opportunity to sit here and listen to your word, even though this is a tough time for us as students. We need to be reading or to be writing something, but you have allowed us to listen to these things so that we can be built in our faith that it is Christ alone. And so as we walk around, as we do our studies, as we pray, as we serve, we will serve in courage because our salvation is guaranteed. We will not add anything or subtract anything from your word. We will love your word. We will rededicate and double our efforts to love you. And we will know that Christianity is not about what we can do. It is about what you have done for us. I want to pray for anyone here who is not born again. You are here, you we have talked theology here, but you haven't chosen Christ and you want to choose him today. You are here and you want to give your life to Jesus because it's Christ alone. Please raise up your hand. I would like to pray with you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior tonight. And you here, just raise it, just show me by raising it high so that I can pray for you. It is Christ alone. Anyone? Okay, now I want to pray for us as Christians. Maybe there are issues bothering you, worrying you, and you have staggered in your faith, you have wondered whether you are doing the right thing being in the Christian union, whether other people are doing all sorts of things. You you serve God here, you study the Bible, you are in small groups, and you risk any time, you often wonder. And our theme is is wondering how often we wander away from God just like the church in the 16th century. If you raise up your hand and put it down, just to show a made that you're there and to the Lord and put it down. Thank you, just put it down. Thank you, put it down. And then here are lots of us, just raise it to the Lord and by raising and put it down, you say, Lord, I'm here, you know me, you know my struggles. 
you are my high priest. You understand me. So my Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters here. We come together to pray and to ask for your forgiveness and for your affirmation and for your strength. Oh Lord, we come even with our sicknesses and diseases and worries and questions about why some of our relatives and friends at home are not doing so well. Some of our relatives are sick in hospital. Lord, we pray for your healing touch, wherever they are. The things that worry us, you remind us, you are our high priest. You enter the holy of the holy once and for all. And you know us because you suffered like us in this world. We have confidence that even now, you have heard and answered our prayers. For this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Let God's people say, Amen.